What are eating disorders? Eating disorders are psychological, or mental. Ailments that involve an obsession with food and with being thin. Eating disorders strike about 1% of teenagers in the United States. And girls are affected far more often than boys. People with eating disorders frequently feel depressed and anxious. And they often have a low opinion of themselves. They develop an obsession with food and sometimes devote many hours a day to an intense exercise routine. They frequently withdraw from friends and family. Finding excuses to avoid social situations, particularly those that involve food. The two most common eating disorders are anorexia and bulimia. People suffering from anorexia avoid eating whenever possible. What little food they do eat causes anxiety and fear that it will make them fat. Anorexic people usually lose weight rapidly. But even after they've become alarmingly skinny they still look in the mirror and see themselves as overweight. Anorexia can cause a severe drop in energy and ability to concentrate. It can also result in damage to internal organs, loss of hair, and weakening of bones. If it goes untreated, anorexia can become quite serious and even deadly. Bulimia is characterized by behavior known as binge and purge. People suffering from this disorder eat large quantities of food, but as soon as they've finished eating they make themselves throw up or take laxatives, which stimulates the colon to produce a bowel movement. Bulimia can cause damage to the kidneys and stomach. And the frequent vomiting sometimes causes the person's tooth enamel to decay. People with anorexia often appear dramatically thinner. But bulimia can be harder to recognize as a bulimic person does not actually lose much weight. Doctors aren't exactly sure what causes eating disorders. Some believe they are a result of the tremendous pressure society places on young girls to be thin models. In magazines and celebrities on television reinforce the idea that being beautiful equals being thin. Some research has suggested that eating disorders may be the result of a chemical imbalance in the brain. And that the tendency to develop such a disorder can run in families. Regardless of the cause, it's vitally important that people with eating disorders seek treatment. Eating disorders can be very serious, and the longer they go on, the harder it becomes to treat them. What is mimicry? Mimicry is the ability some animals have to resemble another animal. So closely that they can fool either their prey or their predators. For example, the beautiful and brightly colored monarch butterfly has a foul taste. And most birds will avoid eating it. The viceroy butterfly, with its similarly colored orange and black wings. Looks so much like the monarch that most birds are fooled and will also avoid the viceroy. The American zone tailed hawk has similar color and body shape to that of a certain kind of vulture. Vultures do not attack live animals, they eat only carrion. 
which is the flesh of animals that are already dead, so small animals on the ground are not afraid of them. The zone-tailed hawk flies in groups with these vultures, disguising itself among them. And then swoops down on unsuspecting rodents that didn't recognize the hawk in time to scurry away. The red milk snake, which is harmless, has color patterns similar to the deadly coral snake. A potential enemy could easily mistake the milk snake for the coral snake and Thinking it is venomous, leave it alone. Are spiders insects? Many people think of spiders as insects, but actually they are classified in a separate category. Spiders are part of a group called arachnids, which also includes mites, ticks, and scorpions. Arachnids share many features with their arthropod cousins. But they differ in that they do not have antennae. Also, spiders have eight legs, insects have six. And their bodies are segmented into two parts, Insects' bodies have three parts. Why do worms come out after it rains? Go outside near any patch of dirt on a warm summer afternoon after a rainfall. And you are sure to find plenty of earthworms on driveways and sidewalks. Scientists are not certain why this happens. But the worms may emerge from the soil to escape from the rainwater that has filled their tunnel homes. While earthworms require a certain amount of moisture, they can drown if they're submerged in water. Unfortunately, their escape from the rain-soaked soil onto a warm driveway can also prove deadly. If the sun comes out before a worm can make it back to some dirt, it can get dried out. What happens when a person loses his or her voice? When your vocal cords and the tissue that surrounds them are irritated or swollen you usually have a condition called laryngitis. Laryngitis makes your voice sound funny and hoarse and in some cases, can even keep you from speaking altogether. Then it is said that you have lost your voice. Usually the swelling in your larynx or voice box is caused by a cold or infection there. But sometimes smoking, or yelling, singing, and talking a lot can cause the problem. After a few days of resting the vocal cords and not speaking. Or after the illness that has caused the swelling goes away, your voice will return to normal. What does it mean if an animal is an endangered species? There are many organizations in the United States and all over the world that study and research plant and animal species. Determining which ones may be headed for extinction. Any species in such danger is described as endangered. Once a species is endangered, 
it becomes illegal to hunt that animal or destroy its habitat. In 2001 the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the organization that maintains the nation's list of endangered and threatened plants and animals, listed over 1,000 animals and nearly 750 plants worldwide. Threatened species are those that might soon become endangered. The goal of such organizations is to help a species recover to the point that it no longer needs to be listed as endangered. Which spiders are poisonous to people? Most spiders are capable of injecting venom into the animals they bite. But only a few can cause harm to humans. Two spiders most often associated with harmful bites are the black widow and the brown recluse. The black widow can be found all over the world, including throughout the United States, except Alaska. Females are far more common than males, the male usually gets eaten by the female after mating. Their shiny black bodies have red markings on the underside that are frequently in the shape of an hourglass. Black widows feed on insects, but they will occasionally if they feel threatened bite a human. A bite from a black widow, while it can cause a person severe pain and nausea, is not generally life-threatening. The brown recluse spider can most commonly be found in the southern and western United States. But it can also be seen in the northern states. A bite from this small spider may not be immediately detected. But after a few hours a painful blister may form. The wound can take several weeks to heal. In very rare cases, the bites of brown recluse spiders have been known to cause death in humans. These shy spiders are not aggressive and generally only bite when they are disturbed or handled. The funnel weaver spider, found in southeastern Australia, and certain kinds of tarantulas that live in Africa and South America have also been known to cause harm to humans. The Brazilian huntsman is believed to be the spider with the most toxic poison it would take only 0.0000021 ounces. 0.006 milligrams of this spider's venom to kill a mouse. If a spider bite occurs, the best thing to do is to try to collect the spider so it can be identified and to see a doctor as soon as possible. Most spider bites are harmless, though mildly annoying. How do bees make honey? Honeybees collect sweet nectar from flowers and bring it back to their nests or hives. There it is stored for future use, for its sugar provides honeybees with the energy they need. The nectar is stored as honey, which is a thick, concentrated form of nectar that has been converted in the bees' digestive tracts. Honey is stored in many little compartments or cells in the nest, called a hive. Which the bees seal over with wax something they also produce. We call this honey-filled wax honeycomb. 
Beekeepers take honeycomb from the hive, leaving enough behind for the bees. Using the wax for candle making and the honey to sweeten all kinds of foods. How many kinds of fish are there? There are around 25,000 different species of fish, with hundreds of new species being discovered every year. Of all the vertebrate groups including fish, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, and birds fish are the most diverse. Most fish have scales, but some do not. Some are brilliantly colored, Others blend in with the muddy sea bottom or the plants they live amongst. And certain fish can even change their colors to match their changing environment. There are even fish that can glow, a function called bioluminescence. In the pitch black world of the deep sea. Some fish have sleek, torpedo shaped bodies with fins. Some have spiny or puffed up bodies. Others are flat, and still others have long, snake-like bodies. The largest class of fish by far are the bony fish, or osteichthyes. This class includes most of the fish that people catch for fun and for food. Like salmon, trout, tuna, sole, and perch. All bony fish have a skeleton that is at least partly made up of bone. And most have plate-like scales, a cover over their gills, and a swim bladder. Which is a sack filled with gas that the fish can empty or release to control how closely they swim to the surface. The bony fish range in size from the goby which is one of the world's smallest vertebrates at about one half inch, one centimeter, in length. To the enormous whale sharks, which can get as long as 50 feet, 15 meters. Among the most fascinating classes of fish are the cartilaginous fish. Or chondrichthyes, including sharks and rays. Chondrichthyes have skeletons made of cartilage instead of bone. Cartilage is an elastic tissue that is more flexible than bone but can still provide support. Pinch the tip of your nose, and you'll see what cartilage feels like. Sharks have scales, but not like the ones found on bony fish. Shark scales feel rough like sandpaper, and they are made of a material similar to teeth. In fact, the teeth of sharks are actually modified scales. Sharks usually have powerful tails, a blunt snout, and powerful jaws with multiple rows of teeth. If a shark loses teeth while feeding or fighting, new teeth from the back rows will move to the front. Many people think of sharks as savage and dangerous. But in fact only a small number pose a threat to people. While some sharks can get extremely large, most species are smaller than 3 feet, 1 meter, in length. With the smallest shark, the dwarf dogfish, measuring only about 8 inches, 20 centimeters, long. Another type of chondrichthyes, the rays, have wide flat bodies with the eyes on top and the mouth and gills underneath. They live at the bottom of the ocean, moving slowly through the water by gracefully flapping their wing-like fins. 
while many rays are harmless to humans, some such as stingrays, have narrow tails with sharp, poisonous spines. If the stingray feels threatened, it can whip its spiny tail at its enemies, causing extremely painful and sometimes severe wounds. Rays range in size from a few inches to more than 20 feet, 6 meters, in width. Another class of fish, known as the jawless fish, or agnatha, includes lamprey eels and hagfish. Many of these primitive species are parasites, meaning they live off other organisms. Lampreys in particular have caused major problems for commercial fisheries. Destroying large numbers of trout and other fish in the Great Lakes and other regions of the United States. They have long, eel-like bodies and round, jawless mouths. They attach onto their prey by suction, biting into a fish's flesh with their small, sharp teeth. Their skeletal structure consists only of a cord made of cartilage. Called a notochord, running the length of their bodies. Why are there so many insects? There are so many insects because they are essential to life on Earth and play many important roles in keeping our planet healthy. Most of the world's flowering plants, about 80%, are pollinated by insects. Insects carry pollen from the male parts of a blossom to the female parts of another plant's flower, allowing reproduction. Most of our fruits and vegetables are the result of this kind of plant reproduction. Insects also feed on the remains of dead plants and animals, keeping our environment clean and returning nitrogen, carbon, and other valuable elements to the soil in their waste. In addition, insects are a vital part of Earth's food chain, providing nourishment for one another. There are many thousands of insect-eating insects. As well as for reptiles and amphibians, for birds and fish, and for mammals, such as mice and bats. In many parts of the world, insects even make up an important part of the human diet. What happens when people stutter? People who stutter speak with many uncontrolled pauses and repetitions of sounds. It is caused when some of the muscles involved in speech spasm, or contract abnormally. Talking is a complicated process that involves muscles that work the lungs. Vocal cords, throat, tongue, cheeks, and lips. When each part doesn't work precisely together, stuttering can occur. Stuttering is not uncommon in young children. They are still learning about language and searching for new words and new ways of putting them together. In speech. But well before a child is ready to enter school, help for stuttering should be found. Children who cannot communicate well with others become frustrated. And start to feel bad about themselves and their abilities. Doctors don't really know why people stutter. Though it seems to run in families and affects far more boys than girls. 
it is believed that a problem in the motor control center of the brain. Along with nervous tension, causes the muscles of speech to spasm. Training to speak slowly and smoothly and to breathe deeply during talking often helps the problem. Why do mosquitoes bite? Just female mosquitoes bite, male mosquitoes feed only on fruit and plant juices. The female mosquito bites people, and other animals, to feed on their blood. She needs blood so that her eggs can develop properly before they are laid. One way a female mosquito locates a victim is by feeling the body heat of an animal as she flies by it. How many different kinds of insects are there? More than 980,000 species of arthropods exist, and most of those are insects. Estimates vary, but some scientists believe there are around 900,000 known species of insects. And many more species are yet to be discovered. Some experts believe there may be as many as 10 million different kinds of insects. What are bugs? Most people use the word bug when talking about insects like beetles, bees, and butterflies. And other small, many-legged creatures that crawl, jump, or fly, such as spiders and centipedes. All of these critters belong to the same phylum, called Arthropoda, which also includes crustaceans, like lobsters and crabs. Arthropods have hard skeletons on the outside of their bodies, called exoskeletons, and they also have jointed limbs, arthropod means jointed feet. Arthropods make up more than 80% of the world's animal species. The word bug does correspond with an official category, though, in the scientific world. A true bug is classified as an insect that belongs to the order Hemiptera. The insects in this order can be recognized by the X-shaped pattern on their backs. A design formed by their wings at rest. They also have sucking mouth parts and a hardened gula, which is the underside of the head. The 30,000 species of the Hemipteran order include bed bugs, fire bugs, and some water bugs. Do spiders really eat the bugs they catch in their webs? Yes, most spiders live on insects and other related arthropods. Very large spiders can capture small birds and snakes in their silk traps. Spiders know they've made a catch because they can feel the vibrations. Caused by struggling bugs caught in their strong, sticky webs. Sometimes spiders tightly wrap their prey in silk to subdue them. They usually kill their prey by injecting them with a paralyzing poison or venom that they produce.
Are worms insects? While some insects are worm-like in their immature, or larval, stage. The invertebrate creatures classified as worms are not insects. There are many different types of worms, in the earthworm category alone, there are thousands of species. Earthworms are very beneficial little animals. They are part of the diets of a huge variety of birds and other animals. And they also help keep the soil they live in healthy and nutritious for plants. The tiny tunnels created when worms burrow into dirt, they're actually eating the dirt as they go. Help the roots of plants get more nutrients, air, and water. Even the worm's manure, called worm castings, is beneficial, it's a great fertilizer. Earthworms are hermaphroditic, meaning that each worm has both male and female sex organs. A single worm is not capable of reproduction. However each worm still needs a partner in order to get its eggs fertilized. While earthworms cannot actually hear or see, they can pick up vibrations and can sense light. The species of earthworm most common in the United States is rather small. These usually grow to be about 10 inches, 25 centimeters, long. There is a species found in Australia, however, that can be as long as 11 feet, 3.3 meters. Why, and how, do animals change color? Many animals can change their color, some over a period of seconds and others over several months. Cephalopods, a group including octopuses and squids, are especially skillful at changing color rapidly, they can turn different colors in less than a second. Their color changes are usually triggered by a heightened state excitement or fear. Which brings on an amazing display of different colors spreading over their bodies. Several kinds of fish and some amphibians and lizards are also able to change colors. Though their transformations take a bit more time than those of the cephalopods. Color changes take place in special pigment cells called chromatophores. Changing the size of these cells moves the pigment around, altering the animal's coloration. Such animals change their colors for a number of reasons. Those that can rapidly change colors do so to startle or confuse predators or to better blend in with their environments, a technique known as camouflaging. Camouflaging can either be used by an animal that wants to hide from an attacker or by an animal that doesn't want to be seen by its prey. Color changes can also be used to attract a mate. Some animals undergo color changes with a change in seasons. Certain mammals and birds that live in cold climates, for example, have white fur and feathers in the winter so they can blend in with the snow and be less noticeable to their predators. Some songbirds will grow brightly colored, attractive feathers for the mating season. Those feathers are replaced by duller colors after mating is over. These color changes are also caused by pigment cells, located beneath the fur or feathers.
If fish breathe oxygen, why can't they survive on land? Some fish can breathe on land. Of these, a few actually must breathe air these are called obligate air breathers. Others, like the eel-like lungfish, the bowfin, and the gar, are adapted to breathe either air or water. These fish probably evolved to breathe air because they live. In warmer water where oxygen is present in smaller amounts. For the most part, however, fish must get their oxygen from water and not from air. If such fish are taken out of water, they suffocate. Fish are able to get oxygen from water through the many tiny blood vessels spread over the surface area of their gills. When fish are out of water, their gill arches collapse. And the blood vessels are no longer exposed to the oxygen in the air. Even fish that can breathe air must still live primarily in the water because it is in water that they are capable of movement. If they can't move, they can't get food or escape from enemies. What is bioluminescence? Bioluminescence is the ability of some organisms, like fireflies, to light up. This phenomenon occurs in some protozoa, fungi, ocean-dwelling invertebrates. Such as some species of shrimp and squid, and even some fish, anglerfish and hatchetfish. It does not occur in more highly developed animals like birds, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals. The light results from a chemical reaction. And scientists believe it serves a variety of functions in animals. Sometimes animals use their light to confuse or scare their enemies. And sometimes it is used to attract a mate. For some deep sea creatures, their body light may help them see in an otherwise completely dark environment. Do fish sleep? While fish don't sleep in quite the same way as people, scientists believe they do enter a resting state. People are generally still, with eyes closed, during sleep. Most fish don't have eyelids, so they obviously can't close their eyes to go to sleep. And some fish do seem to stop moving when they sleep, but others cannot afford to stop moving. Tuna, for example, must stay in motion because they need to have water moving constantly over their gills to get oxygen. Some fish find a nook between rocks or in a coral reef to rest in. And others actually build a nest for sleeping. When it's ready for a rest, the parrotfish releases a jelly-like substance that surrounds its body. Offering some protection while it dozes. Do fish sleep? While fish don't sleep in quite the same way as people, 
scientists believe they do enter a resting state. People are generally still, with eyes closed, during sleep. Most fish don't have eyelids, so they obviously can't close their eyes to go to sleep. And some fish do seem to stop moving when they sleep, but others cannot afford to stop moving. Tuna, for example, must stay in motion because they need to have water moving constantly over their gills to get oxygen. Some fish find a nook between rocks or in a coral reef to rest in. And others actually build a nest for sleeping. When it's ready for a rest, the parrotfish releases a jelly-like substance that surrounds its body. Offering some protection while it dozes. Can flying fish really fly? There are about 40 species known as flying fish. These small fish, around 18 inches, or 45 centimeters, long, are found in warm waters all over the world. They don't technically fly, but they can glide through the air, using wing-like fins and a powerful tail. When chased by a predator, a flying fish heads straight for the water's surface at a rapid speed. With its fins tucked in close to its body. As it breaks the surface of the water, it spreads its wings and uses its flapping tail. Still underwater, to give it an extra boost. Flying fish don't go very high usually just a few feet above the water but they can glide for fairly long distances. As it reaches the water after a glide, a flying fish can use its tail to propel it up again for another run. Like a skipping rock that makes several bounces. A single glide can take a flying fish as far as 600 feet, 180 meters. And the total distance traveled over a series of consecutive glides can be as far as 1,300 feet, 400 meters. Can flying fish really fly? There are about 40 species known as flying fish. These small fish, around 18 inches, or 45 centimeters, long, are found in warm waters all over the world. They don't technically fly, but they can glide through the air, using wing-like fins and a powerful tail. When chased by a predator, a flying fish heads straight for the water's surface at a rapid speed. With its fins tucked in close to its body. As it breaks the surface of the water, it spreads its wings and uses its flapping tail. Still underwater, to give it an extra boost. Flying fish don't go very. High usually just a few feet above the water but they can glide for fairly long distances. As it reaches the water after a glide, a flying fish can use its tail to propel it up again for another run. Like a skipping rock that makes several bounces. A single glide can take a flying fish as far as 600 feet, 180 meters. And the total distance traveled over a series of consecutive glides can be as far as 1,300 feet, 400 meters.
What do fish do in the winter when water freezes? If a body of water freezes completely, from the surface to the bottom. Fish cannot survive for long unless they are like the Antarctic ice fish. Which has chemicals resembling antifreeze in its blood to help it survive in water below freezing temperatures. For other kinds of fish, as long as there is some unfrozen water beneath the ice. They can generally survive the winter. The danger in such wintry conditions is not freezing to death but suffocating. Ice on the water's surface makes it hard for oxygen in the air to dissolve in the water. Fish can survive in very cold water in the same way land animals like bears can live out the winter. By becoming dormant, meaning slowing down bodily processes, eating very little, and consuming less oxygen. What do fish do in the winter when water freezes? If a body of water freezes completely, from the surface to the bottom. Fish cannot survive for long unless they are like the Antarctic ice fish. Which has chemicals resembling antifreeze in its blood to help it survive in water below freezing temperatures. For other kinds of fish, as long as there is some unfrozen water beneath the ice. They can generally survive the winter. The danger in such wintry conditions is not freezing to death but suffocating. Ice on the water's surface makes it hard for oxygen in the air to dissolve in the water. Fish can survive in very cold water in the same way land animals like bears can live out the winter. By becoming dormant, meaning slowing down bodily processes, eating very little, and consuming less oxygen. What is the largest fish? The largest living fish is the whale shark. It usually grows to about 30 feet, 9 meters, in length, but some have been measured at more than 50 feet. 15 meters, long, weighing several tons, a ton is 2,000 pounds, or 908 kilograms. These gentle giants pose little threat to humans, however. They have very small teeth and eat mainly fish and plankton. Which are tiny organisms that drift in both salt water and fresh water, providing food for numerous animals. Whale sharks recognizable by their distinctive skin pattern of small dots and stripes. Swim very slowly, just beneath the surface of the water. What is the largest fish? The largest living fish is the whale shark. It usually grows to about 30 feet, 9 meters, in length, but some have been measured at more than 50 feet. 15 meters, long, weighing several tons, a ton is 2,000 pounds, or 908 kilograms. These gentle giants pose little threat to humans, however. 
They have very small teeth and eat mainly fish and plankton. Which are tiny organisms that drift in both salt water and fresh water, providing food for numerous animals. Whale sharks, recognizable by their distinctive skin pattern of small dots and stripes. Swim very slowly, just beneath the surface of the water. Do piranhas ever attack people? Piranhas have a reputation for being vicious hunters with a strong attraction to the scent of blood. While they do have very sharp, pointy teeth and powerful jaws. And they sometimes hunt in large groups, piranhas rarely attack humans or any other large animals. Found mostly in the rivers and lakes of South America. Piranhas can grow to be 2 feet, 60 centimeters, long. Their preferred prey are fish that are smaller or only slightly larger than themselves. Groups of piranhas have been known to attack larger animals that have wandered into their territory. Engaging in a feeding frenzy and rapidly removing hunks of the animal's flesh. But such incidents are quite rare, and many species of piranhas get most of their food from scavenging. Meaning they feed on the remains of fish that are already dead. Do piranhas ever attack people? Piranhas have a reputation for being vicious hunters with a strong attraction to the scent of blood. While they do have very sharp, pointy teeth and powerful jaws. And they sometimes hunt in large groups, piranhas rarely attack humans or any other large animals. Found mostly in the rivers and lakes of South America. Piranhas can grow to be 2 feet, 60 centimeters, long. Their preferred prey are fish that are smaller or only slightly larger than themselves. Groups of piranhas have been known to attack larger animals that have wandered into their territory. Engaging in a feeding frenzy and rapidly removing hunks of the animal's flesh. But such incidents are quite rare, and many species of piranhas get most of their food from scavenging. Meaning they feed on the remains of fish that are already dead. Which sharks pose a danger to people? There are more than 350 shark species, and only a few of them have been known to attack people. Contrary to the habits of the bloodthirsty shark featured in the Jaws movies. Scientists don't believe that sharks purposefully hunt people. In most cases where sharks have attacked humans. They were probably protecting their territory or mistaking the person for a seal or another type of shark prey. Unprovoked shark attacks do happen, but they are pretty rare. The international shark attack file at the University of Florida recorded fewer than 80 such attacks throughout the world in 2000, 10 of those resulted in death. Around 30 different kinds of sharks have been known to attack people. With the white shark, the bull shark, 
and the tiger shark being the most common aggressors. Which sharks pose a danger to people? There are more than 350 shark species, and only a few of them have been known to attack people. Contrary to the habits of the bloodthirsty shark featured in the Jaws movies. Scientists don't believe that sharks purposefully hunt people. In most cases where sharks have attacked humans. They were probably protecting their territory or mistaking the person for a seal or another type of shark prey. Unprovoked shark attacks do happen, but they are pretty rare. The international shark attack file at the University of Florida recorded fewer than 80 such attacks throughout the world in 2000, 10 of those resulted in death. Around 30 different kinds of sharks have been known to attack people. With the white shark, the bull shark, and the tiger shark being the most common aggressors. How does an eel make electricity? The electric eel is a South American fish with a long, worm-like body. It can grow to a length of 9 feet, 2.75 meters, and weigh nearly 50 pounds, 22.7 kilometers. The electric eel floats through slow-moving water searching for fish to eat. It breathes air, which means it must come to the surface every few minutes. The electric eel has organs made up of electric plates that run the length of its tail. Which makes up most of its body length. This eel which has no teeth uses electric shocks to stun its prey. Probably to protect its mouth from the struggling, spiny fish it is trying to eat. The eel shocks the fish with several brief electrical charges. Temporarily paralyzing it so the eel can suck it into its stomach. The electrical charge can be anywhere from 300 to 600 volts, enough of a shock to jolt a human being. Electric eels are not aggressive, though. And primarily use their electricity to ward off enemies and stun their prey. How does an eel make electricity? The electric eel is a South American fish with a long, worm-like body. It can grow to a length of 9 feet, 2.75 meters, and weigh nearly 50 pounds, 22.7 kilometers. The electric eel floats through slow-moving water searching for fish to eat. It breathes air, which means it must come to the surface every few minutes. The electric eel has organs made up of electric plates that run the length of its tail. Which makes up most of its body length. This eel which has no teeth uses electric shocks to stun its prey. Probably to protect its mouth from the struggling, spiny fish it is trying to eat. The eel shocks the fish with several brief electrical charges. Temporarily paralyzing it so the eel can suck it into its stomach. 
the electrical charge can be anywhere from 300 to 600 volts, enough of a shock to jolt a human being. Electric eels are not aggressive, though, and primarily use their electricity to ward off enemies and stun their prey. What kind of animal is a seahorse? These unusual and fascinating creatures offer many surprises. They are fish, though with their bony rings, horse-like heads, and curly, gripping tails, they don't look anything like other fish. Most seahorses are quite small, around 1.5 inches, 4 centimeters, in length. Though the largest of them can be nearly 12 inches long, 30 centimeters. Scientists believe that seahorses mate with a single partner. A behavior called monogamy that is rare in the animal world. And, even more unusual, it is the male seahorse that gets pregnant. Carrying and nurturing the fertilized eggs in a pouch in his body. The female deposits the eggs in the male's body. And he provides oxygen and nutrients until the young are ready to hatch. The seahorse population has been threatened in recent years by destruction of its habitat and by overfishing. Hundreds of thousands of seahorses are caught and sold each year to large aquariums and to people who simply like to collect unusual animals. Many more are sold to several countries in the Far East, where seahorses are believed to have medicinal value. What kind of animal is a seahorse? These unusual and fascinating creatures offer many surprises. They are fish, though with their bony rings, horse-like heads, and curly, gripping tails, they don't look anything like other fish. Most seahorses are quite small, around 1.5 inches, 4 centimeters, in length. Though the largest of them can be nearly 12 inches long, 30 centimeters. Scientists believe that seahorses mate with a single partner. A behavior called monogamy that is rare in the animal world. And, even more unusual, it is the male seahorse that gets pregnant. Carrying and nurturing the fertilized eggs in a pouch in his body. The female deposits the eggs in the male's body. And he provides oxygen and nutrients until the young are ready to hatch. The seahorse population has been threatened in recent years by destruction of its habitat and by overfishing. Hundreds of thousands of seahorses are caught and sold each year to large aquariums and to people who simply like to collect unusual animals. Many more are sold to several countries in the Far East, where seahorses are believed to have medicinal value. Is a starfish really a fish?
In spite of their name, starfish are not true fish. They are invertebrates known as echinoderms, all fish are vertebrates. There are actually close to 2,000 species of starfish. And they can grow to as large as 25 inches, 65 centimeters, across. They usually have five arms attached to a disc-like body, and they can grow a new limb if one is lost. Starfish have tube feet on the underside of their arms that allow them to move and to cling to rocks or coral. The starfish's mouth is located on the underside of the disc, and some species actually turn their stomachs out of their bodies to surround and digest their prey, including oysters, mussels, and clams. Is a starfish really a fish? In spite of their name, starfish are not true fish. They are invertebrates known as echinoderms, all fish are vertebrates. There are actually close to 2,000 species of starfish. And they can grow to as large as 25 inches, 65 centimeters, across. They usually have five arms attached to a disc-like body, and they can grow a new limb if one is lost. Starfish have tube feet on the underside of their arms that allow them to move and to cling to rocks or coral. The starfish's mouth is located on the underside of the disc, and some species actually turn their stomachs out of their bodies to surround and digest their prey, including oysters, mussels, and clams. Where do seashells come from? Seashells are more than just pretty souvenirs to take home from a trip to the beach. Shells are the hard outer coverings, or exoskeletons, of small, soft-bodied, invertebrate animals. Most animals that live in seashells are called mollusks. Some live in the water and others live on the shore. Some mollusks usually the ones called bivalves, named because their shells are divided into a left and right valve are delicacies for humans, like mussels, clams, oysters, and scallops. Snails are also mollusks. Seashells are made mostly of calcium carbonate and other minerals found in the sea. The shell is formed in layers when the mantle, a tissue that is part of the mollusk's body, secretes a substance that hardens. Some shells have a glistening, pinkish-orange interior that is called nacre, or mother of pearl. Seashells come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes some are curvy spirals, others are spiny. Others are fan-shaped with grooves spreading across the surface and a glorious range of colors. Scientists aren't exactly sure why some shells are shaped or colored the way they are. Though they believe certain shapes help the mollusk burrow into the sand or intimidate its enemies. And certain colors help to camouflage the shell from predators. Where do seashells come from?
seashells are more than just pretty souvenirs to take home from a trip to the beach. Shells are the hard outer coverings, or exoskeletons, of small, soft-bodied, invertebrate animals. Most animals that live in seashells are called mollusks. Some live in the water and others live on the shore. Some mollusks usually the ones called bivalves, named because their shells are divided into a left and right valve are delicacies for humans, like mussels, clams, oysters, and scallops. Snails are also mollusks. Seashells are made mostly of calcium carbonate and other minerals found in the sea. The shell is formed in layers when the mantle, a tissue that is part of the mollusk's body, secretes a substance that hardens. Some shells have a glistening, pinkish-orange interior that is called nacre, or mother of pearl. Seashells come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes some are curvy spirals, others are spiny. Others are fan-shaped with grooves spreading across the surface and a glorious range of colors. Scientists aren't exactly sure why some shells are shaped or colored the way they are. Though they believe certain shapes help the mollusk burrow into the sand or intimidate its enemies. And certain colors help to camouflage the shell from predators. Why do we hear ocean sounds when we hold shells up to our ears? Many of us have held a large shell, usually a conch, pronounced conch, up to our ears and heard what sounds like waves crashing against the shore. The magical part is that you can be miles from the ocean and still hear that sound. Why do we hear ocean sounds when we hold shells up to our ears? Many of us have held a large shell, usually a conch, pronounced conch, up to our ears and heard what sounds like waves crashing against the shore. The magical part is that you can be miles from the ocean and still hear that sound. How does it work? It seems very mysterious, but the answer is actually pretty simple. The curved inner chambers of the shell are just bouncing back into your ear. The noises that are around you all the time but that you don't usually notice. The louder it is around you if you're near a construction site or at a party. For example the louder the ocean sound in the shell will be. If you don't have a conch shell handy to test this out, don't worry. You can use a cup or even your curved hand to demonstrate. Shells of different sizes and shapes will reflect noises in varying ways. And so will different kinds of cups. Try holding a large plastic cup over your ear, pull it back a bit and see how the noise changes. Then try it with a coffee cup to see if it's different. How does it work?
It seems very mysterious, but the answer is actually pretty simple. The curved inner chambers of the shell are just bouncing back into your ear. The noises that are around you all the time but that you don't usually notice. The louder it is around you if you're near a construction site or at a party. For example the louder the ocean sound in the shell will be. If you don't have a conch shell handy to test this out, don't worry. You can use a cup or even your curved hand to demonstrate. Shells of different sizes and shapes will reflect noises in varying ways. And so will different kinds of cups. Try holding a large plastic cup over your ear, pull it back a bit and see how the noise changes. Then try it with a coffee cup to see if it's different. What are killer bees? Killer bees are the result of a scientific experiment begun in the mid-1950s, when European honeybees and African bees, which are accustomed to hot temperatures, were brought to Brazil and bred with each other in an effort to create a honeybee that would produce honey in hot, tropical climates. The experiment was a big failure because unlike the mild-mannered European honeybee the new Africanized honeybee had an aggressive nature. Quick to attack intruders, the new bees have been responsible for a number of human deaths. The danger of these bees comes from their tendency to attack in swarms. If a person is stung by enough bees at one time, it could trigger a severe allergic reaction. These killer bees have made their way into the southern United States. But the American beekeeping industry is working on ways to correct this experiment gone wrong. What causes bad breath? Poor dental care is a major cause of bad breath. Old food particles between teeth and odor producing mouth bacteria. As well as tooth decay and infected gums, can give breath a bad smell. Brushing your teeth for at least two minutes a couple times a day, flossing. And even brushing your tongue, the home to lots of bacteria, can make a big difference. Sometimes bad breath can be caused by something you eat, certain foods, like onions, or garlic. Contain smelly substances that are absorbed into your bloodstream and then released into your lungs, causing bad breath. This smelliness will only last about a day, however, until the food leaves your body. Once in a while, bad breath can be caused by an illness in the body. Can flying fish really fly? There are about 40 species known as flying fish. These small fish, around 18 inches, or 45 centimeters, long, are found in warm waters all over the world. They don't technically fly, but they can glide through the air, using wing-like fins and a powerful tail. When chased by a predator, 
a flying fish heads straight for the water's surface at a rapid speed. With its fins tucked in close to its body. As it breaks the surface of the water, it spreads its wings and uses its flapping tail. Still underwater, to give it an extra boost. Flying fish don't go very high usually just a few feet above the water but they can glide for fairly long distances. As it reaches the water after a glide, a flying fish can use its tail to propel it up again for another run. Like a skipping rock that makes several bounces. A single glide can take a flying fish as far as 600 feet, 180 meters. And the total distance traveled over a series of consecutive glides can be as far as 1,300 feet, 400 meters. Why weren't you born with better teeth? One reason could be that you inherit different traits from each of your parents. And sometimes they don't work well together. If you inherited your mother's small jaw, for example, but your father's large teeth. You are going to have crowding problems in your mouth. Your teeth will slope backwards or forwards, or turn or overlap one another in order to try to fit into their small space. On the other hand, if your teeth are too small for your jaws, you will have big gaps between your teeth. These are just a few of the problems that an orthodontist tries to correct. Try to remember that wearing braces for a few years when you are Young will give you a lifetime of healthier, good-looking teeth. Also remember to brush and floss more often when you have braces. Because they trap food particles against your teeth. Can you figure out the temperature by listening to a cricket chirp? Yes the warmer the night, the faster a cricket sings. This phenomenon is so reliable that a mathematical equation can be used to calculate air temperature. Count the number of cricket chirps made in 13 seconds. And add 40, and you will get the temperature outside, in degrees Fahrenheit. Why do I have to get shots even when I'm not sick? The shots that you get when you're not sick are called vaccinations or immunizations. They prevent you from getting certain serious infectious diseases like polio, tetanus, and diphtheria. Not too long ago, before vaccinations were used. People especially young children died in large numbers from such diseases. Most infectious diseases are communicable, which means they are easily passed from one person or animal, to another, through infected air, contaminated food and drink, or an opening in the skin. Ordinarily, when disease-causing germs, viruses or bacteria, invade your body. Your immune or defense system springs into action to get rid of the foreign organisms. Your white blood cells. 
produce substances called antibodies that attack and destroy the invaders, helping you to recover. The antibodies remain in your body. Ready to attack the same germs before any illness develops should they ever invade again. After having one infection, you are said to have developed a natural immunity to those particular germs. But you can also become immune to certain disease causing germs through vaccinations. Developing immunity through vaccinations is a whole lot safer than developing it naturally from having a serious illness. Taken into the body by mouth, swallowed, or injected in a shot. Vaccinations are dead or harmless versions of specific disease-causing germs, these inactive germs are unable to cause sickness but can still make the body's immune system produce antibodies against them. So if a vaccinated person is exposed to the live germs in the future, Antibodies will already be present in his or her body, waiting to attack before any illness can start. Sometimes it takes several doses of a vaccine spread. Out over time to produce full immunity in an individual. The immunity given by other vaccines may weaken after a number of years and have be strengthened with a booster shot. Do fish sleep? While fish don't sleep in quite the same way as people, scientists believe they do enter a resting state. People are generally still, with eyes closed, during sleep. Most fish don't have eyelids, so they obviously can't close their eyes to go to sleep. And some fish do seem to stop moving when they sleep, but others cannot afford to stop moving. Tuna, for example, must stay in motion because they need to have water moving constantly over their gills to get oxygen. Some fish find a nook between rocks or in a coral reef to rest in. And others actually build a nest for sleeping. When it's ready for a rest, the parrotfish releases a jelly-like substance that surrounds its body. Offering some protection while it dozes. Why do bees, wasps, and other insects sting? An insect's sting is a defensive weapon used when it senses danger. It was developed to keep predators away from it or from its colony in a hive or nest. It is designed to pierce the skin and inject a poison or venom into the predator. If you have the bad luck to be stung by an insect, there are a few things you should do. First, move away from the hive or nest if one is nearby. A stinging bee sends out a chemical signal that excites other bees. Second, Try to remove the stinger from your skin by scraping it with something hard instead of pulling it. Which could squeeze the attached venom sac, releasing more of the irritating substance into the wound. Put some ice on the sting to ease the swelling and pain. If you develop a lot of swelling, a rash, or, most important, have trouble breathing. See a doctor, because you are having a serious allergic reaction.
Why are some flying insects drawn to lights at night? Scientists aren't exactly sure why this happens. They have noticed that on clear nights, when the moon is visible, fewer insects gravitate to artificial lights. This observation has given rise to a theory, for millions of years. Insects have used the light of the moon, coming from one direction above to guide them during night flight. But artificial lights, which put out rays of illumination in all directions, confuse this ancient navigational system. Flying in a straight line is impossible when an insect is around an artificial light, which causes it to fly in circles. <laughs>